Ethereum may have looked like it was a little bit of a slow player this year, but of course, I think things are starting to change. There's a lot happening in the ETH ecosystem, and I'll explain all that for you guys today. It is big news for Ethereum holders. Let's break it down. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. All right, so I want to thank our sponsor today, and that is Lux Algo. Make sure and enhance your trading experience. All you have to do is go over to luxalgo.com. Later in the show today, I'll actually show you some of their indicators. Use our link down below, it gives you a little bit of a discount. All right, so to get into a few things here, I want to get into the first thing that many of you are probably aware of, but maybe if you're new to the channel, maybe you're not aware of this, and that is Ethereum name service domains. Now, what is an ETH and ENS? An ENS essentially is like a .com. Think of it that way, but it rides within ETH. And when you look at transactions that are going to happen on Web3 and maybe really the future of the internet, this is where your name or your .eth is going to start to connect you to other places out there for payments, transactions, all sorts of layers of connections that are going to happen, much like what your website has done when you go out and register at .com. All right, so let's jump to this first tweet. This, of course, is GoDaddy actually partnering with ENS. Now, this is a big deal because of the opportunity here of basically connecting any kind of .com to your ENS. And if you look at the screen grab that they're doing here, it shows you how simple this is of turning on what they call DNN SEC. And this enables all your websites to be able connected to your Ethereum name service address. Now, this is a pretty big deal because this is going to create an opportunity for almost every website out there that has an ENS to be able to circumvent all sorts of different payment architecture, including things like PayPal, Venmo, all that. That's how big of an opportunity is. You also have to look at the size of this market overall. There's a lot to it. But here, of course, was a tweet on Vitalik talking about why this would be such a big deal. And I'll show you something on the chart that's kind of interesting around the ENS token at the time in which he did this. This was back here on January 3rd. Part of the reason that ENS had not really taken off was because of the typical challenges that ETH has, and that, of course, is gas fees. ENS is super important. It needs to be affordable. So this was a post he did on January 3rd. But here on January 29th, let me kind of zoom in on that for you guys. The Dow was approving this, essentially, this gasless DNS SEC feature. So this is a feature that now allowed DNS domains to be used with and in ENS without incurring any transaction fees. That is huge. GoDaddy is the first registrar now to actually integrate this. GoDaddy pretty much being the, the largest one out there. If you look at the number of d domains that GoDaddy runs right here, customer base of over 20 million individuals and businesses worldwide. This is the all-time revenues and size of uh, what GoDaddy's business is to give you an example of how much this is continuing to grow. So the potential for the market right now in, in what they call a TAM, total addressable market, very large, very large, obviously. And this is just one registrar. So we're going to see, you know, the top four or five potentially go into this very quickly. That is only going to continue to drive ENS naming services and other projects like them, I think, from a token standpoint and a use case standpoint into the moon. A couple other ones that you want to watch, of course, is a project we've reported on before here. This is Bonfita. Now, Bonfita is the Solana equivalent to ENS. Only one difference. With ENS, you're actually paying those on an annual fee every time you renew that. With Bofita, it's a one-time fee. So there are some benefits to that, and I think this is going to continue to see, and I think also between what we see with not only Ethereum, but also with Solana, just that alternative. All right, so one other component that will start to play a role in this is decentralized social. Now, with decentralized social, Farcaster, of course, Got a tremendous pump right here. You can kind of see this right here of to total daily active users. This, of course, is right here at the end of, of December, early January, and then boom, up to around 30,000 users. This is pretty big in the capacity of where decentralized social is going to be going. This is a protocol that will be used out there, much like Lens Protocol. I think we've, you've heard us probably talk about that quite a bit. This is a big deal because this is all part of the next generation web. Now, I want to go to a, a clip real quick to kind of give you an example of what technology advancement they made to cause that pump. Listen in. This is a massive innovation in the Web3 space. So somebody made a frame where you can, within Farcaster, you can play Doom. You can play this game. It's just they've embedded this game. Somebody else, our friends at Sound, Sound made 
And so you can listen or mint a song directly within Farcaster. I share a song on Twitter or X and I'm trying to encourage my friends to listen to that song or I'm an artist and I'm sharing a song. They're gonna have to click a link and go listen to that song on a different platform, right? That's a lot of friction. That's taking people off platform. Twitter doesn't like that. So they actually push that post down on the algorithm. Now, oh, you can listen and mint that song directly within a frame. You want to buy cookies because you're following this, this cookie brand. Well, you could instantly check out and buy the cookies. And if you're launching a new brand and you're going after on-chain users, you need to focus your go-to-market strategy. You go to where the wallets are. Spend your time there, where the wallets are, because that's where your users, not only are they there, they can engage in so many ways with your brand because of their wallet. And if you look at U3 here, this is an example of a social media aggregator, so to speak. There's Farcaster, Lens, Protocol, exact, et cetera. It kind of shows an example, even though it's not a great example, but it's an example of the frame that could be used. And what this simply means is when you go over and you're interacting with that frame, it enables you to get authenticated. Authentication like this is going to help in loyalty, everything from you know content sharing, all sorts of different business and use cases that will start to change. I want to go to another clip here because this gets you into uh, the next thing, which is where Mark Zuckerberg was talking about where the future is going. And this was seven months ago. Listen in. It was fine to like have these systems that people felt a little more locked into, but I think for the mature state of the ecosystem, I, I don't think that that's going to be where it goes. So I don't know I'm pretty optimistic about this. And then if we can build threads on this, then you know maybe we can you know, over time, um, you know, as the standards get more built out, it, it's possible that we can spread that to more of the stuff that we're doing. The first step was kind of getting interop to work between our different messaging systems. That basically has just meant completely rewriting Messenger and Instagram yeah. Direct from scratch. Other messaging. Apps. Yeah, well, I mean, the plan was always to start with with the um, the interop that between our services, but then and then to get to that. Um, hmm. But yeah, we're starting to experiment with that too. I actually think people will feel better about using our products if they know that they have the choice to leave. Hmm. Um, I think it really just gives you know creators, for example, the sense that okay, like I'm not. It's I have a agency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in in a way. That actually makes people feel more confident investing in a system if they know that they have freedom over how they hmm. they operate. He hit on a few things there that I think starts to get you in the mind of, of Mark Zuckerberg of where he's going. And if you look at what's happening on Meta, the chart, I think everybody is starting to realize VR is here. It's a real thing. And now we're seeing the revenue opportunities of it. And it's only just beginning. But if you think about this, if in fact we see interoperability and the potential of Farcaster maybe going viral. If it does in fact go viral, it's very possible we could see Meta utilizing something like Ethereum for these kinds of transactions. And he talks a little bit about that. They, they want to build it for their own ecosystem. That's probably threads most likely, but then also plugging into these interoperable platforms out there. So it's a very interesting thing. And if, of course, Farcaster is migrating from Ethereum uh, to Optimism Superchain. Uh, could be an opportunity there for you because if this does go viral, this is one to be watching as well. To kind of give you guys a little bit of a, head, a heads up on this, this is Farcaster. It's called Far Duck West, uh, but this is where you can claim your social, so to so be it, a social media handle. But remember, this is for one protocol. There's other ones out there like Lens Protocol, etc. So there is a difference between this and ENS. ENS is more of an overarching function from a Web 2 to Web 3 transition. This is the potential of where decentralized social media could be used. So it is something. There's a couple of ways you can do it on claiming your handle. You, you will be able to do it either through Optimism or through ETH. So if you just click on that claim handle, it'll plug in and give you an opportunity to connect your wallet, and then you can go out and do that of getting your handle. All right, a couple other things here I want to hit on right here. ETH Denver is happening later this month. So you can kind of see, we're going to see a big amount of ENS PR and a lot of people that are going to really, I think, kind of zone in on this. So this is happening right here towards the end of February. So be on the on the look for ENS. ENS is one that we're continuing to watch. I'll jump to the charts here just to give you guys an example. This is where ENS, of course, it took its bump today because of this news with GoDaddy. So it's gone really from around, what was it, trading at around 17 to up to around 20. What are we at? About 13, almost 14% up. Interesting point was back here, this was back here in the Vitalik bump, so to speak. So this was where Vitalik was talking about ENS and that it just needed to be cheaper. 
And here we are about a month later, and we now have a partnership in a very short period of time with GoDaddy. So we'll start to see this move. This could be a good trajectory up based on the current situation, especially with timing here with ETH Denver happening. But also I think now with GoDaddy, this could become a big marketing push for GoDaddy to kind of connect the dots for what might be the future and Web3 function for Ethereum. Others I want to hit on, of course, is Bonfita. This, of course, is one we've talked about before. It did hit its high right here back in December. Uh, and, of course, a nice little bump down. So if you are looking at an entry, this might be the spot to do it. I mean, it's you can kind of see some of the order blocks here trading a little bit lower here around $0.22. Cents. But Bonfita, remember, is the one-time payment solution for Solana, which essentially is the same kind of thing, an ENS or a domain uh, for Web3. All right, so uh, we'll probably do another video tomorrow on Solana, which is getting into more of the SPL tokens that are being listed on Coinbase. Mobile just got uh, an update there, so we'll try to cover that for you guys. But keep your eye on those. ETH is another one that, of course, if it really starts to get legs under it, and I think people understand what could really happen with Ethereum in this framework of going from Web 2 to Web 3 for every website out there, you know, maybe ETH right now is still very undervalued around that $2,300 mark. And it has been depressed a little bit here, obviously, with what Bitcoin has been doing. So we're watching that one, of course, for sure. So those are the three that I would keep an eye on uh, overall. Uh, and make sure and jump into the Diamond Circle. This is where we do additional content. And sometimes we'll do breakdowns of market sentiment index along with charts like this. So that's the best place to catch that. All you have to do is click the link down below. If you guys want to catch me on X, it's at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.